Good morning. morning. Welcome to the Lord's house. How good it is for us to be here to celebrate again the Savior's birth. We are in the midst now of the Christmas season. The 12 days of Christmas started yesterday. So it's good to be here to remember again the love that God has for all of us by sending his son Jesus to be born as a humble baby. A few quick announcements. Uh, First of all, we will be having a New Year's Eve service at 7 p.m., so if that's, uh, you're available and that's of interest, please come join us, New Year's Eve, 7 p.m. Uh, also, um, uh, if you've ordered poinsettias, please, you can start picking them up anytime. Uh, they'll start to probably get a little bit dry over the next uh, week or so, and even if you haven't ordered a poinsettia and you'd like one, go ahead and take one. That's okay, too. Uh, Also, uh, a week from today, Sunday the 2nd, we will be having a reception in between services to uh, congratulate and bid farewell to our uh, our, uh, church secretary, Christine Kordokas, as she enters retirement. She's been a great blessing to the church and to me as well, as as well as to our other pastors who've been here. So uh, keep that in mind, a week from today. If you uh, are here, please uh, join us for that reception. And then I have the radio announcement. I'd like to welcome all those of you listening on the radio and watching on the internet. This is the Service of Christ Evangelical Lutheran Church in Stevensville, Michigan. Our services on Sunday are at 8 and 10.45 with Bible study in between at 9.30. And for those unable to attend on the weekend, we have a Thursday evening service at 7 p.m. Our church is located on Cleveland Avenue, just south of Glenlord Road. And again, we welcome you all to our service. With that, let's begin with our opening hymn.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and feed us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the forth into joyous song and sing praises. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and 
peace to his people on earth. Let us pray. O oh God, our Maker and Redeemer, you wonderfully created us, and in the incarnation of your Son, yet more wondrously restored our human nature. Grant that we may ever be alive in him who made himself to be like us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Reading from the Book of Concord, the Formula of Concord, Solid Declaration, Article 3, the Righteousness of Faith Before God. Neither Christ's divine nor human nature by itself is credited to us for righteousness, but only the obedience of the person who is, at the same time, God and man. And faith thus values Christ's person because it was made under the law for us and bore our sins. And in his going to the Father, he offered to his heavenly Father for us poor sinners his entire, complete obedience. This extends from his holy birth even unto death. In this way, he has covered all our disobedience, which dwells in our nature, in its thoughts, words, and works. So disobedience is not charged against us for condemnation. It is pardoned and forgiven out of pure grace alone for Christ's sake. On this, the first Sunday after Christmas, our Old Testament lesson is from Exodus chapter 13. The Lord said to Moses, Consecrate to me all the firstborn. Whatever is the first to open the womb among the people of Israel, both of man and of beast, is mine. Then Moses said to the people, Remember this day in which you came out from Egypt, out of the house of slavery. For by a strong hand the Lord brought you out from this place. When the Lord brings you into the land of the Canaanites, as he swore to you and your fathers, and shall give it to you, 
You shall set apart to the Lord all that first opens the womb. All the firstborn of your animals that are males shall be the Lord's. Every firstborn of a donkey you shall redeem with a lamb, or if you will not redeem it, you shall break its neck. Every firstborn of man among your sons you shall redeem. And when in time to, uh, time to come your son asks you, what does this mean? You shall say to him, by a strong hand the Lord brought us out of Egypt from the house of slavery. For when Pharaoh stubbornly refused to let us go, the Lord killed all the fir firstborn in the land of Egypt, both the firstborn of man and the firstborn of animals. Therefore I sacrifice to the Lord all the males uh, that first open the womb, but all the firstborn of my sons I redeem. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To us a child is born, to us a son is given. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. Sing to the Lord a new song. Our epistle lesson is from Colossians chapter 3. Put on, then, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other. As the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of God dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. My eyes have seen your salvation. A light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. Alleluia. Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. And when the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who first opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And his father and his mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel and for a sign that is opposed. And a sword will pierce through your own soul also, so that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years having lived with her husband seven years from when she was a virgin, then as a widow until she was 84. She did not depart from the temple, worshiping with fasting and prayer night and day. 
And coming up at that very hour, she began to give thanks to God and to speak of him to all who were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. And when they had performed everything according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Once again, we'd like to welcome all those of you listening on the radio and watching on the internet. This is the service of Christ Evangelical Lutheran Church in Stevensville, Michigan. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, Simeon took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, 
Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory to your people Israel. And his father and his mother marveled at what was said about him. In Luke chapters 1 and 2, there are four canticles, that is, poems or songs. The first one is the Magnificat, which is, means to magnify. It's Mary's song of praise when she was with Elizabeth. The second is the Benedictus, which means blessed or blessed. It's uh, what Zachariah said when John the Baptist was born. The third is the Gloria in Excelsis, which means glory in the highest. And of course, that's what the angels sang to the shepherds when Jesus was born. And the fourth one is before us today. It's called the Nunc Dimittis. It means now dismiss. It's the song that Simeon sang upon seeing the Messiah. These are all four used very often in the church, and today's is no exception, the Nunc Dimittis. We're going to look at it a little more in depth. If you'd like to follow along, you can open up your bulletin. We're going to look at that handful of verses in more detail to see exactly what it is that Simeon was talking about. Now, first of all, the events of our gospel lesson would have happened 40 days after Jesus was born. After childbirth, a sacrifice was made for the purification of the mother, so in this case, Mary. And that was according to the law of Moses that needed to be done. And in this case, there was also a sacrifice for the redemption of the firstborn son, because from the time of the Passover, the firstborn son belonged to God. Now in verse 28, we notice it says, that Luke says, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said. Simeon took him up in his arms. That would be Jesus. And he says, he blessed God. Now as some of you may know, when God blesses us, it means that God bestows something good to us, gives us some sort of blessing. But when we bless God, it's a little bit different. It means that we give thanks and praise to God. So that's what Simeon is doing here. And curiously enough, he's holding Jesus. He's looking at the baby Jesus. And then he says, in verse 29, he begins and says, Lord, who's he talking to? Is he talking to God the Father, giving him thanks for this baby who is the Messiah? Or is he talking to Jesus? He's holding the baby Jesus in his arms and looking at him. Who's he talking to? And of course, if you've attended my Bible studies before, you know the answer is yes. <laughs> it's both. Imagine for a moment holding Jesus in your arms, knowing that he is the Messiah. He is the Savior. He is the Redeemer of the world. That would be incredible, that moment in time. And then Simeon says, again in verse 29, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. This is where we get the name from. It's translated into Latin and it begins nunc dimittis, which means now dismiss. Now dismiss me. Simeon also right here calls himself a servant. He has been serving God. And God somehow had revealed to him we don't know how, a dream, a vision, somehow. God had revealed to him that he would see the Messiah before he died. Well, does God fulfill his promises? Yes, always, without fail. This is another proof of that. Every promise God has ever made to each one of you, and there are many in the Bible, he has never failed on a single promise. Verse 30, Simeon says, For my eyes have seen your salvation, your salvation. Some thought the Messiah would be a political Messiah or a military or cultural leader, someone who would save them from oppression. 
save them from the Romans or save them from the, uh, the cultural downfall that they saw happening around them. Simeon, however, correctly understands that the purpose of the Messiah was for the salvation of God's people. This is one of the themes throughout the Gospel of Luke, by the way. Jesus as the sacrifice for all people, a main theme in the Gospel of Luke. And we can see Simeon correctly understands that because of what he says next. Verse 31 that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples. The Messiah will bring salvation in a public way. It won't be hidden. It will be obvious to all people, all nations. Not merely to rescue the Jewish people from oppression, but for all nations around the world and throughout history. And Simeon points this out as he continues in verse 32. A light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. This babe will be a light. A light displaying God's love. And this light will be revealed, will be proclaimed to all people, Gentiles too, not just Jews. And that, of course, is good news for us. Simeon correctly understands this. This is wonderful news. Salvation for all people, including you and me. But yes, the Messiah did come forth from the Jews, from the Jewish nation. And therefore, they have the honor of being God's chosen people throughout the Old Testament. From the, when the Messiah came, he came from the Jews. But now, you, you who are God's people, the church, the modern-day Israel, from you comes forth the Messiah today, that is, the preaching and teaching of the Messiah. And the love of the Messiah is displayed to the world through you. So from you comes forth the Messiah today. And Joseph and Mary marveled. And they wondered, what does this mean? That good Lutheran question. They weren't sure. Now, like all of Scripture, this canticle... This canticle, the Nunctimittis, applies to you as well right now. We still use this canticle today, along with the other canticles at various places, but this canticle used in, is used in a very specific place in the church, right after the Lord's Supper. What happens when you receive the Lord's Supper? God delivers to you yet again forgiveness of sins, strengthening of faith, connection to Jesus, direct connection to Jesus, and of course, thereby, through all those means, he gives you peace. Peace to you through the Lord's Supper. In the Lord's Supper, you have just experienced Jesus yet again. You have seen him with the eyes of faith. You have communed with him. You have become one with him. And so you can rightly say, after having received the Lord's Supper, Lord, both Father and Son, Lord, you have given me peace. Peace through this sacrament. Now you can dismiss me, Lord. I can depart back out into the world in peace, knowing that even though there is chaos and turmoil out there, yet you, Lord, have given me peace. For I have seen your salvation. I have heard about the Christ. I have listened to his word. I have seen him through the eyes of faith. And I have become one with him yet again. I have seen your salvation, Lord. For Jesus is the salvation for all people, including the Gentiles, including you and me. And he especially gives glory to Israel including the new Israel, which is the church, which is us. 
Jesus glorifies you. He glorifies you through communion. He makes you holy yet again through the sacrament. What better way to respond to Holy Communion than to give thanks and praise to God, to bless God by echoing the words of Zechariah when he saw the Christ child in the flesh, when he said, Lord, now you can dismiss us in peace. You can have peace. Peace because of what Jesus did for you. Peace because Jesus was born as a little babe, humble, lying in a manger. Peace because of what Jesus did for you, living a perfect life as your substitute. Peace because of what Jesus did, dying for you in your place, your substitute. Peace because Jesus rose again from the dead to bring life and immortality to light for all who will believe in him. Peace. You can have peace yet again because of this Christmas season. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace which surpasses all understanding. Guard and keep your hearts and your minds in the one true faith in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. We now have the great opportunity of joining together in unity and publicly confess our Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and descended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again in glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Let us pray. Lead your church, O Lord, to follow the example of blessed Simeon, that all baptized Christians would embrace the Christ child by word and faith, and so be ready to depart whenever they are called. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would bless the continual proclamation of your gospel message of your Son, Jesus. Be with our pastor and all pastors, our church workers, our principal and teachers, and all of our missionaries, including Mindy Tu's in uh, Taiwan, Caitlin Warden de Ramirez in the Dominican Republic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lover, lover of mankind, we pray, O oh Lord, that you would bless our congregation, our church body, our synod, and we, that you would be with all of our members, all those gathered here, and especially this day, we pray for Amy Manti, Virginia Jennings, Michael Ostrander, Sharon Gatz, Barbara Raddy, and Reverend and Mrs. Ronald Moritz. Bind all of our families together in perfect harmony. Rule our hearts with the peace of Christ. 
cause his word to dwell richly among us. Let fathers and heads of the household teach and admonish their families in all wisdom. Let our songs, words, and deeds be done in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ with thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for your blessing upon the work that you have given us to do. The ministries of this congregation, our Grief Share and Stephen Ministry, the ministry of our school, our work among youth and children and families, our women's ministries and men's ministries. And we pray for your blessing upon the work and vocation you give, have given to each of us to do in our individual lives. Prosper us in all that we do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, your Son alone is judge of the earth, who decides all matters in equity and righteousness. Let us entrust ourselves to Christ, and likewise delight in the fear of the Lord. Let us not put our trust in princes and leaders of this world, who must judge by what they see and hear. We pray for your blessing, your guidance, and your wisdom upon all those who serve us in the government, those who serve us in our community, our police, firefighters, and health care workers, and those who guard and protect us in the military, including Allison Blake, James Virgi, Joseph Schaefer, and Matt Weiss. We pray for their health and their wisdom, and we ask that we may honor them for the sake of our conscience before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Blessed Lord, help all those who are sick or suffering in any physical, mental, or emotional way. Especially, we pray this day for Addie Scheffler, Allie Wallace, Amanda Clark, Amy Manti, Barbara Mall, Beth Davis, Chris Aulis, Dave Knuth, Fernie Rance, Jean Mort, Joan Kern, Joseph Klupp, Joe Panzica, Kathy Karnick, Laura Lesher, Lenny Weiser, Lee Yeski, Miro Versick, Nancy Duke, Nathan Gherkin, Sarah Dixon, Stacy Skarupa. Also, we pray for Arturo Villafane, Aubrey Hamby, Austin Arndt, Kate Reed, Dan Beasley, Grace Gherkin, Carol Searing, Jim Russell, Keith Avery, Ken and Jean Wright, Maria Young, Marion Gherkin, Nancy Gerald, Laura Gilson, Noah Beatty, Paula Hicks, Phil Oberhaus, Renee Hook, Taryn Schrader, Valerie Watson, and William Mall. For these and all others known to us, Lord, we ask for your healing hand upon them. Be with all those who are suffering from COVID right now and grant them a speedy and safe recovery. Help all those who are undergoing surgery that they may have that surgery completed successfully. Surround all of these, Lord, with your love in Christ. According to your gracious will, we ask for your healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for our brothers and sisters who have departed in, in the peace of faith. Bring us with them to see with our own eyes the light of the nations and the glory of Israel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him it 
is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, whose way John the Baptist prepared, proclaiming him the promised Messiah, the very Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, and calling sinners to repentance, that they might escape from the wrath to be revealed when he comes again in glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and singing. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers. Deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship, with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Now may this true body and true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you and keep you steadfast in the one true faith until life everlasting. Depart in peace with great Christmas joy. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.